David, first of all, we've talked a lot about this over the last several years. What do you make of this announcement, the shift in policy? Is it a step you believe in the right direction? Um, I, th I think it is a step in the right direction. And, it, and as you said, it's a victory for these families. Um, they were all at this meeting, all, all four families of the, of the hostages, the American hostages that were killed, uh, the Foley's, the Mueller's, as you mentioned, and also the parents of Stephen Sotloff and, and Peter Kessig. And it, it's amazing that they came, you know, participated in this review. It's been a months long process and then came back to Washington and faced all these feelings uh, and all these memories and all the frustrations. But, you know, it's, it's a real achievement what, they've, what, what happened today for them. And, Kristen, you did the same. You were at the meeting today between the president and, and the families of hostages. What was it like? Yes. Um, it, it was a very serious environment. Um, you know, the president came in. He was very personable. He made a point to go around to each person and shake their hand on the way in and at the end of the session. Um, and he started off by saying he could relate to this. Um, he thought about this not only as president, but as a father and as a spouse. And that really resonated with the family. Families. Um, and he also, you know, said he understood that his family members, your sole goal is to bring your family member home, and he understood that people would want to go to any length to do that. So um, the families really appreciated that. David, it, it's a, it, it is an odd line that the administration is walking here. On the one hand, saying it's still U.S. government policy that paying ransoms to terrorists is prohibited, while well, on the other hand, saying that it basically would ignore the law where families are involved. It's true, and, and that's the sort of core problem here. I mean, this is a compromise um, that doesn't, again, these are steps forward, but, the, you know, these families, you know, they asked me, then they, I think they asked the president today, will these, you know, changes necessarily bring people home? And they won't necessarily. The issue is, you know, paying ransoms or releasing prisoners. European governments, we've talked about it, have paid, you know, tens of millions of dollars in ransoms. And, you know, the thing that would bring people home would be if the U.S. government would start doing that. Most Americans oppose that, according to opinion polls. So today is sort of a compromise. At the least, it's a step forward in that, along with being victimized by kidnappers, these families won't be victimized a second time by their own government. And, and David, I mean, the fact that these families would now, they'd be allowed to pay ransoms, because, but they're essentially going to be competing now against European governments that are, can pay far more. They're going to have to be trying to raise large sums of money. Absolutely. The, no one knows the exact amounts, but it, I, I think in Syria, European governments, directly or indirectly, were paying at least one or two million dollars per captive. What, you know, average American family can raise that kind of money? Kristen, something's b being added to the new policy is what's called a family engagement coordinator to yeah. act as a, a single point of contact between families and the government in hostage situations. I'm wondering, in, in David's case, would that have been a, a useful resource for you? It would have been useful. It would have streamlined the process. You know, during the beginning of a kidnapping, there's such a steep learning curve, learning about where your loved one's being held, who to go to in the government. So if there is already an, a person appointed to you, I think that's very useful. Um, I'm also very curious to see who will be appointed as the um, diplomatic envoy. I think that's very important as well. David, lastly, I mean, the fact that more than 30 Americans are currently being held hostage, were you aware the number was that high? Because that's a number I had not heard before. Um, I hadn't heard it. You know, I was surprised as well. And again, this, this lack of coordination where Europe is paying and that creates an incentive. And then you have growing sort of safe havens where people can be held. You know, there's obviously Syria. I was held in Pakistan. Now you have state collapse in Libya and Yemen. Uh, the only place where they've reduced kidnappings worldwide is Colombia and the Philippines. And that's where local armed forces with U.S. training actually shrunk the, the safe havens, the areas where they can hold captives. That seems to be the only long-term wow. solution to slowing it's this incredible. down. incredible. Uh, Kristen Mulvey-Hill, I appreciate you being on. It's great to have you. Thank David you, Road thanks. as well. Thank you both.